In the African countries of Congo and Nigeria, where our sisters live, life is difficult, especially because of the lack of safe drinking water. Getting water is a daily chore. It's time-consuming and laborious. Children must walk great distances to fill a bucket with water, often on the way to school, which decreases the amount of time available for learning. On a recent trip to Cincinnati from Africa, Sisters Fidelia Chukwa and Lillian Sueco shared their struggles with the water crisis and the slow progress that is being made to improve living conditions. During her visit, Sister Fidelia described her daily routine as a young girl to retrieve water for herself and her family. In the morning, I would wake up, go to the stream with my container, and the stream would be like a mile, one and a half miles, two miles sometimes, to go and fetch water. So you have to get the container according to your own age and size, what you're able to carry on your head. So I remember I went through that when I was in grade school. So my parents would wake me up. So I would walk to the stream with other children. And then I would fill my container. Lack of clean water is compounded by inadequate sanitation. This leads to diseases such as diarrhea, typhoid, dysentery, and cholera. Villagers, especially children, can become very sick and often die from these diseases. If we don't have clean water, you know, even the health of the sisters and their students or the, the sick ones they are serving in danger. In this part of the world, there is an acute sense that water is the key to life. Yet because there is no alternative, unimproved water sources are used posing significant health risks. Sister Lillian Sueco explains the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur's water-focused mission. We are trying, really, to help this part of the world to have clean water. Natural sources of water exist. In fact, some say there is an abundant supply far beneath the surface. Digging a well or borehole provides access to groundwater, which is pumped to a holding tank or cistern. Generators provide a means of pumping water, but diesel fuel used to power the generators is expensive and difficult to transport. And when the fuel runs out, so does the ability to pump water. Photovoltaic systems with solar panels are used instead. We have to have the source, and as we've uh, uh, discussed that the source depends upon the site, what's available, whether it is a, an underground spring, which is often a good means to obtain water, um, if it's available. A river or a stream is another possibility, though that carries with it more of a danger of pollution. Uh, the third possibility is if neither of these are available, then we, we have uh, uh, boreholes that we will drill, which is similar to a conventional well. The other parts are that once you have found a source of water, we usually have some form of a tank or cistern that is located at the source. And then there's, of course, the electrical equipment that's required to run the, uh, the pumping equipment. And this is what the, the photovoltaic system powers. To assist with troubleshooting issues encountered in Africa, the photovoltaic learning lab was established in a converted convent garage in Cincinnati. High school students in the STEM program, which is science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine, use the learning lab. It's a miniature version of the photovoltaic systems in Africa. From the learning lab, students conduct experiments and test various situations such as battery life, battery capacity, and electrical loads. They also learn about renewable energy. There is a need of extending the panels for this project because hospitals need clean water, schools need clean water, and a neighbor. The project is wonderful because it's helping people 
The foundation of the sisters' mission is education. Water and the prospect of bringing water to remote African villages paves the way for students to learn. You see, if children are not spending time retrieving and purifying water, they can be in school. A byproduct of developing a sustainable water system is the creation of a reliable power grid. When introduced to villages as electricity, internet and cell phone service become available. This brings education to remote villages, which in turn brings work, income, and a better way of life. And with water, new industries and increased opportunities are created, like having the technical proficiency within each country for maintaining the power grid. Sisters educated in information technology and electrical engineering are currently working with students and laypeople to become self-sustaining. The sisters and the people in the countries they serve understand the critical importance of water. They can live without electricity, and they do. They can live without modern conveniences, and they do. But they cannot live without water. Clean water is the key to life. You know, Julie was a woman of courage. You know, he started the congregation in France, but she crossed the border. And that's what we need to do among us today also. Among our students, our teachers, our staff, crossing borders in mind, in spirit, in heart. Julie said every time that we need to have, our heart should be wired as the world. <laughs>